Good evening, everybody. Dave Little with you from the Sam McKee Broadcast Center. And I have a very special guest with us tonight in the Selkie. It's Mitch Cushing. Mitch, how are you doing tonight? Very good. How about yourself? Pretty good. Pretty good, Mitch. Thanks so much for being here and being with us. Mitch, I want to get right into it. You're a young man who's trying to drive here at the Meadowlands, not yet 20 years of age. It took you six and a half hours to get here from Albion, Maine. Is that right? Uh, that'd be the generous time. Uh, there's plenty of traffic to fall into that. Uh, it's not the most enjoyable drive, but it's definitely worth it. Now, what about some background, Mitch? You apparently started driving when you were 12 years of age? Yes, sir. And wh what kind of drives does a 12-year-old get? Uh, it's a little fair, a uh, little home fair, basically, in uh, Cornish, Maine. Uh, it's called the Cornish Fair. It's basically just a family fun day that's put on uh, by the horsemen and the town. And it's for anybody that doesn't have a license or is too young. And it's just a very good day. It's promotional, I guess, in the sense of uh, in the state. And I just had an opportunity with my grandfather's horse and one of my dad's, and it's the first best time in my life I ever had. <laughs> now, you told me last week that you got your paramutual license on your 18th birthday? Uh, 16th. On, my, your six, on your 16th birthday, yeah. you got a paramutual license? Yes, sir. OK, and that's your provisional license? Yes. Uh, OK. QF. Okay, so you're allowed to drive in paramutual races from that point forward? Yes, qualifiers and fares. Okay, now what is it that you got on your 18th birthday? Uh, I got my A license. Okay, that's your which, A license. Which allows me to drive here and anywhere in America. Now, ever since then, you've been driving in, in Massachusetts and Maine? Yes. Who have you been driving for? Uh, I've been driving a little bit for my family, uh, uncle, uh, our racing team, RHM Racing. And uh, I've been picking up a lot of drives almost every race, and uh, for whether they're friends or just trainers. Now, how are you at 19 years of age, going about getting drives at the Meadowlands. I heard that the, two weeks ago you told me that you drove the six and a half hours for one drive. Now that's dedication. Yes, uh, I mean, anything to make my dreams happen in uh, this sport, it's, uh, it's a dream come true just to race here, uh, even one time, and now I'm trying to make the move to do it more than once, uh, which is happening. And it's just, for my uncle, it was, it was an honor that way just as much. Now tell us, uh, you uh, participate for RHM Stables. Yes. And that's your dad's stable? Uh, yes. He's, uh, it's uh, my stepmom, Heidi, my dad, Ron, and myself, Mitch, and then my girlfriend, Caitlin. She's a huge part of everything we do. And all of our other teammates, uh, like Mike Petrelli, and anybody that works for us. It's a right. big family. So you've been driving for them at, at Massachusetts and Maine. Yes. At what tracks? Plain Ridge and Plain Massachusetts? Plain Ridge, Scarborough, Bangor, and then all the fairs that we have go on during the summer months. Now you told me your dad winters at Yonkers and the warm weather months he's up in Massachusetts Back for home. the most part? Yep. And then we, uh, we traveled this year with uh, a nice mare of ours. She's just a delight in. And that was the first summer travel we've done in a long time in the lower eastern parts. So did the winter months create an opportunity for you where since there's not a lot of racing in Maine and Massachusetts that's why you're trying here? Yes uh, exactly why I'm trying here looking to stay busy hopefully make a little money and uh, just get exposure for when I go back home like at Plain Ridge uh, the purses are gonna go up even more so hopefully uh, there's some bigger stables more variety of people come in and I can look to get uh, nice drives for good people that can uh, maybe do farther in the sport than just at home and in New England. Now, you had told me about a horse that you had driven here, Lagambe, and uh, we want to take a, take a gander at Lagambe's effort uh, when he was here two weeks ago racing for you. There you are, Mitch, on the outside, number six. Tell me about this stretch run. Uh, I, I felt, when I felt the horse was coming back to me on the last turn, he definitely picked up on that as well. He's a big, he's a big trip horse. He, he can do it first over, too, but when those horses started coming back to him, I could just feel him lift me right up, and he really had go that day. And compared to the start before, when he had first come back down, he had a nice class relief uh, being there in the constellations. So when they started coming back, he felt that just like I did, and he really kicked in and motored home and did his job. Is he the kind of horse who's going to be better off a helmet? Yeah, I think I raced, I went with him at home uh, at a small fair track where my uncle stables, Farmington, on the front very easily, but uh, it, there were, his competition was weaker, and, but off a trip is where he benefits the most, and if they come back to him at all, he, he'll, he won't waste it. Mitch, I just want to backtrack a bit. You were in high school, and you were apparently an honor student all four years. That's great stuff, but apparently you were a pretty good athlete as well. You were a running back in football? Yes, uh, running back, linebacker. Uh, my junior year, I... Me and my dad worked really hard uh, my sophomore, s sophomore summer going into junior year. And I r had a dream, my first dream, to play Division I football. And it was looking very strong. And 
for schools, Division One, and many smaller schools. And I was leading the state in touchdowns and tackles on the other side of the ball. And I blew my ACL out, I think my sixth game of the year. And when that happened, it just kind of deflated me. And I worked my way back. And when I got to camps, I just didn't feel the same. And it kind of just took a back seat to my to my first dream when I was a kid, but ended up being my second dream. All right, so not so bad, the consolation prize is getting into harness racing. Yeah, it's not a bad deal at all. Now let's talk a little bit about the four drives that you have tonight. Apparently you have seven drives coming into tonight. Tonight you got four. How did you manage to get four drives on one card? Because that's not bad work. Yes, uh, a friend of, I got a list, one list on a friend of ours, uh, Ann DePietro. She put me on her horse tonight and tomorrow night. Uh, and the other one that I know of uh, personally is a, a gentleman I drive for at home. I've had a lot of success for him on his horses back at Scarborough and uh, the end of the fair meets. Uh, his, uh, the hard day's night. She went a huge, big mile at Plain Ridge, got parked the whole way. She's a tough, very tough horse to drive. Uh, she doesn't make it easy on you, that's for sure. And the other two are first timers, and hopefully I can make them happy and maybe put me back on next time. Now, a horse like Miss Cude, who raced very well last year on the New Jersey Sire Stakes circuit, this is a real racehorse who's having some problems right now in terms of form. What do you think in getting in? I, I want to get a fifth place check. I just want to get as much as I can. I want to race the horse as well as I can so I can impress the trainer. What's your mindset heading into the race? When I, when I looked at her line so far, uh, she's, like you said, just a little bit struggling this year. Hopefully I can get into a spot where maybe the tougher horses in this race this week do the work for me and uh, maybe race each other. And I just pick up a lot of good pieces and hopefully enough pieces where I can make them good money. You know, Mitch, before I let you go, a lot of guys my age don't interact that much with guys your age. And I wanted to get your feeling on something that's really very important to me and all of us in harness racing. How can the people from my generation get people from your generation interested in harness racing? I think the biggest thing is getting ahead of all the other, all the other uh, competitors, like where Facebook has kind of been caught up with uh, Twitter and Instagram and Snapchat are now the new movement for people my age. And I think keeping up with social media is probably one of the bigger things. And another thing is, at my age, our biggest uh, thing that attracts uh, people like myself is the actual action. Maybe not just sitting down and getting a bite to eat, but being as involved in the action as much as possible, whether it's cameras on the race bikes or on the starting car, anything that gets us as close as possible that aren't actually sitting in the seat like us drivers to be involved as much as they can. Well, hopefully some of the folks from my age group heard what you just said and maybe implement some of those things. Yeah. But clearly social media is the thing we have to think more and more about moving forward. Mitch Cushing, thanks so much for joining us tonight on In the Sulky. Next up in that chair, my co-host and partner Dave Brower with a look at tonight's featured events.